IPv6 DHCP relay. Let's begin. Our objective for you and I in this micro nugget is simple. We want to take a look regarding the DHCP relay and identify why we would need it, exactly why, number two, how it works, and then take a look at the really easy configuration and verification that it's working. So here's our scenario. You and I, let's say we have 100 subnets. So there's subnet one, subnet two, and we've got 98 others. And we want to use DHCP functionality on all of those subnets. Now, how do we pull that off? Well, one option is, it's kind of painful, you can make every router that's supporting those subnets, you can make them a DHCP server. But if you've got 100 subnets, maybe 20 or 30 routers, you don't really want to configure DHCP services on 20 to 30 routers. It's not very manageable. It doesn't scale very well. So to fix that, what we might do is we might consolidate and say, you know what, let's just use a centralized DHCP server. And in a production environment, it's very likely we'd have a couple of them for fault tolerance purposes. And this DHCP server, we could then say, Dear Mr. R1, we want you to listen. And R1 says, well, what exactly do you want me to listen to? We tell R1, we'd like you to listen for any clients making a DHCP request. And if you see that DHCP request, we want you to wrap that up and send it over unicast over to the DHCP server. So that way, this subnet and this subnet and all the other subnets could be supported by one or a couple DHCP servers. And then we'd have the scopes or appropriate pools for the various subnets all defined on this DHCP server. So the routers are acting as a proxy between the DHCP client and a centralized DHCP server. The DHCP relay is the magic that allows this interface to pay attention to those DHCP requests and forward them over to the DHCP server. So the reason why we need it is because by default, the clients are making link local and scope FF02 based multicast requests for one colon two. And these link local multicasts don't make it off of this network segment right here. And if we didn't have the DHCP relay, the client would never get a response to its DHCP request. So that's why we need it. The way it works is, as we described, R1 takes those requests and forwards them over to a DHCP server. Now to configure it, oh my goodness, it's so easy. To configure it, we're going to do basically interface configuration mode for gig 2.0. And we're going to say, we want you to be a DHCP relay agent. And here's your DHCP server to forward to. And that's about it. Now, one other thing we might do is while we're in interface configuration mode, we also might want to tell the router, hey, guess what? When you send out router advertisements, go ahead and set the M bit, which is a managed configuration bit. Set that to on so that hosts who are paying attention to that bit will then know that they should go ahead and use a DHCP server. But if you have statically configured clients that says use DHCP no matter what, it doesn't matter what the M bit says, they'll simply try to use DHCP. So if you want to lab this up or practice, make sure you also set the M bit to one and I will show you exactly how to do that. So as far as configuring, Let's go up to R1. The DHCP server is already set up. Its pools are already defined. All we need to do is set up the DHCP relay agent right here on R1. On R1, let's just do a little bit of verification before we do our configuration. I want to show the details for interface gig 2.0. That's the interface that the DHCP clients are where they're sitting. And on that interface, let's go ahead and enable DHCP relay and it's really easy. We're going to simply say destination is the IPv6 address of the DHCP server, and we're done. Now, I added just for grins this extra piece right here. This is the egress interface or the source IP address of what we're going to use when we send that DHCP request forwarded to the DHCP server. If we're using a global address, you don't have to put it there. However, if you use a link local address like FE80 colon colon 2, if you're next door, if you will, to that DHCP server, then you'd need to specify the interface because with link local addresses, you have to tell it which interface to source it from because it could have several different networks to choose from. But the point I wanted to give you here was that in the interface configuration mode, this right here is how you turn on the DHCP relay functionality. And look at the multicast groups that had joined, first of all. This is the all hosts. The colon colon two is the IPv6 unicast routers. And then we have this guy right here, which is the solicited node multicast group. But once we've issued this command right here, he has also joined now the DHCP multicast group of FF02 colon colon one colon two. That's because it's important now for him to pay attention because those are from clients looking for a DHCP server. So if we use that same command again, 
to do a show IPv6 interface of gig 2 slash 0, you'll notice that we've joined that additional group, which is right there. The other thing I think we should do while we're right here is I'm also going to specify that for router advertisements, I want this router to put the M bit for the managed configuration to set to a 1. And to do that, it's right here in interface config. This says, okay, the bit, the M bit is set to 1. So any clients paying attention to that will automatically say, oh, I need to use DHCP and they'll make a DHCP request. Now to verify this, I've got a client, it's Windows 8 machine, its interface is currently disabled. I'm going to right click and enable it. And right here on the right hand side, I've got a packet capture between R1 and R2. I simply configured R2 as a DHCP server and R1 is doing the DHCP relay over to R2. So we have some router advertisements that are coming in periodically, but once we bring up this interface, we, we should have some DHCP relay activity between R1 and R2. So we'll click on enable. We'll bring the cap packet capture forward. Let's take a quick look at some of the details of the relay that happened between R1, the DHCP relay agent, and the DHCP server, which was R2 in our case. The actual packet went from R1 to R2's addresses, but inside of that DHCP relay, we're relaying the solicit message. This is like the IP version 4 discover of DHCP. It's specifying the link address. So it's saying, hey, says Mr. R1, I heard this request for a DHCP server on my interface 2001DB81 colon colon one. It's this, my friend. That's how the DHCP server knows from which pool of addresses it should go ahead and give an advertisement or an offer from IP version four terminology back. So here's our offer that's coming back. It's called an advertise message in IPv6. If we go down to the DHCP portion, it's specifying that we are offering, as far as the IP address goes, we're offering the address of 5453, ending with that. And we're also offering a DNS server with this address as well for name resolution. And then finally, we have a request, which is from the client saying, I'll take it. And then we have the reply, which is very similar to an acknowledgement inside of IPv4 DHCP saying, hey, I'm glad you got it. Have a nice day. At the client, if that all worked, if we did an IP config, it should show us that IP address as one of the IPv6 addresses that this Windows box is using. And if we did a ping based on a DNS name and that name was in the DNS server, and if we have connectivity to that resolved IP address, the ping should be successful as well. In this micro nugget, we've taken a look at why we need DHCP relay. It's when clients are not on the same layer two domain as a DHCP server, how the DHCP relay operates, how to configure it, and to verify that it's working. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.